judging for the genes of slides. Thank you. Let me get myself a chair while he pulls up the presentation. Yeah, so uh, my name is Floyd DeCosta and uh, this, uh, you know, we dabble on a slightly different slide, probably more around the Flutter Bay, but what, uh, where we, if, if you took the blockchain world and you split it into two halves, you've got the cryptocurrency uh, side of things, and on the other side, you've got more uh, around blockchain as a technology and how enterprises can use it. That's the space we play in, and that's the space we're building a kind of uh, a next-gen platform on which any enterprise can go and build its uh, applications that use blockchain technology. But uh, what I want to talk about is how can enterprises use blockchains for digital transformation, right? Uh, uh, judging next slide. So here's the thing. Uh, today, not a single day goes by where you don't hear about blockchain in, uh, in the media, right? And I'm not talking about scientific journals, I'm not talking about trade magazines, but I'm talking about mainstream media. Not a single day. Every day you pick up, you know, any, uh, e even regular newspapers, right? And uh, companies have put millions, uh, investors have put millions of dollars, and pretty much every financial institution worth its, you know, worth its name is uh, dabbling in the technology in some form or the other, right? Now, you've got a multitude of use cases here. And in fact, the, com the competition slide that I, you know, that that the, the jet that presented before we had, pretty much covers a lot of these places, right? So you've got the whole currency space, and how can you use, uh, and, and and this is where it all started, right? Cryptocurrencies. But now, the asset area is where a lot of the financial institutions today are, you know, uh, looking at leveraging distributed ledgers, but also smart contracts. The guys from Metaurus are pretty much. You know, and, and, and their friends and they pretty much lead on this where they look at smart contracts and the service and things like that. But also, when you look at things like this, it goes beyond just finance and finan fintech and financial institutions, right? So you've got supply chain management, you saw the trade finance thing, but you've also got media companies looking at things like digital rights management that you can now manage on the blockchain. Not just that, in fact, you can also look at legal, and I know I have my friends here from the legal fraternity, and there's tremendous potential where you can actually record uh, things on the blockchain. Of course, there's the whole space around data, and how can you do, uh, you know, electronic records, auditing contracts, and things like that. And last month, but not the least, the whole B2B space, right, which is pretty much disrupting mainstream finance where everything is now B2B. The whole, uh, the whole piece about this intermediation where you take out the middleman and just connect uh, person to person. So a number of use cases, and trust me, they are they, definitely more, but I tried to market this to uh, five large areas. But just to show you the amount of uh, different use cases and potential for blockchain technology, right? Uh, next slide. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> if you've been attending blockchain uh, talks and seminars and presentations, you probably have more than enough of this. But here's the thing. Uh, from digital identity and tokenization to things like smart contracts and business automation, Blockchain is swiftly establishing itself in the enterprise space, right? It is, it is becoming one of the key enablers. It has potential to be a key enabler for the digital enterprise. Now, I've been working in digital transformations in, uh, you know, for quite a while, not related to blockchain, but standard digital transformation. Uh, having designed a kind of platform where you can use Twitter, you, you tweet and you're able to actually check in with your flight using Twitter. Uh, and, and, and things like that. And one of the biggest challenges, or some of the biggest challenges that digital transformations face, not, not necessarily reasons they fail, but challenges, apart from the whole change management uh, and, 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 and the personal thing is about identity, security, and the trust factor. Again, both the previous uh, speakers spoke about this, and how can you bring about the whole, how can you bring about identity and trust in a, in a pretty much trustless environment. 
interactions with part, you know, interactions uh, between parties where they don't trust each other and probably don't even know each other and yet need to interact without a middleman. How can you make that effective? And I think blockchain by its very nature, being digitally native, presents itself uh, you know, to the digital transformation of enterprise, not just banks and financial institutions, but across the board, right? Things about the whole decentralization piece. Uh, again, being cryptographically secure, immutable, once you write a record onto the blockchain, it's pretty much uh, written there forever. And things like the whole uh, the, the consensus piece, right? And that's what makes blockchain such a, a you know, um, it basically lends itself to, uh, to digital transformation that are taken by enterprises across industries. Uh, next slide. So uh, here's the thing. I was, uh, you know, in the last three months or so, I've spoken to a number of industries. I've spoken to uh, a central bank. I've spoken to a stock exchange, and I've even spoken to a clearing house. Now, these are really organizations that don't jump into a new technology instantly. Basically, they need to have fairness, it needs to be stable. They are pretty much the last guys to get on board. But these are people already talking about blockchain as a technology and to see how they can leverage this. Two reasons, probably, like I said, hey, here's something that lends itself and we should be looking at it immediately. Or probably they are the middlemen, they are the intermediaries you know, which blockchain has the potential to disrupt, right? The whole disintermediation piece. And probably that's why, but then let me just check. I have friends here from uh, a credit card processor. I have friends from a legal fraternity. And again, when these companies are looking at blockchain as technology, looking at how they can leverage it, you know that this has legs and this has the potential to fly, right? Uh, can we go to the next slide? Okay, this is where I do the pitch. So, what we are really building is Blockchain Foundry. Now, uh, we offer any enterprise the opportunity to simply design, develop, and deploy blockchain applications. When we went around asking, and, and you know, there have been a number of these conferences we've attended, hundreds of people, you know, talked about different use cases. But when the enterprise needs to start to ask any CIO or any uh, you know, chief innovation officer, one of them, everyone will tell you, yes, we want to explore the technology, yes, we want to dabble in this space, but the question is, how do I get started? How do I even you know, kickstart a project in this space? And that's where you know, we decided to go back and say, hey, how can we make it simple? How can we make it easy? And so what we offer is a complete stack. We offer any enterprise the opportunity to, to have its own blockchain lab. Not just any enterprise, but even a startup or any entrepreneur. What we offer is a complete stack, which means if any enterprise has an innovation center, then we can set up a blockchain lab within that for you. So, put it in simple terms or more technical terms, what you get is free provision cloud servers, free setup um, and uh, blockchain networks with uh, pre-configured nodes and things like that, a cloud development environment, a Git repository to kind of manage, uh, uh, you know, manage the code, manage versions and things like that. And last but not the least, since we built this ground up for the enterprise, things like single sign-on and SSL, everything is very secure, which means any enterprise can now very quickly uh, you know, start to play with blockchain applications. Uh, uh, if you look at it, and, and you know, we've spoken to a lot of enterprises in this space, pretty much all the co-founders come with a background in enterprise. And uh, what we realized is, even, you know, some of the companies, some of the uh, organizations that are looking at the technology, to do a simple POC could take anywhere between three to six months and cost quite a bit. And, what we decided to do is say, hey, how can, and, and that also become, number one is how do I get started, but number two is also how do I avoid this prohibitive cost, right? It doesn't need to be that expensive. And that's where we decided, hey, we got, we building a platform that address these two questions and we can let any enterprise, any entrepreneur simply get started very, very quickly. Next slide. Here you'll see a simple uh, screenshot of what the app, judging? 
this is what, and, and here's the thing, this is what the platform looks like, which means um, any enterprise, we've got some sample code, we've got a bit possible, like I mentioned, which means any enterprise can take some of the sample code we have, clone it, and start to work with their own version of the code. Once they customize it, again, we're not saying, hey, go do something great. Just take a simple application and just get started, right? So take some of the sample code, change the color, change the logo, change the logic of it, and instantly deploy it on the blockchain networks below. Now, what happens is, within a few weeks, you have a, a live blockchain application within your enterprise. What does it do? Number one, hey, you've got something real now. Most enterprises can't even get started, but now you have an application ready in three weeks, number one. Number two, you can actually showcase it to stakeholders and look at you know, getting them on board and uh, basically securing sponsorship for the whole thing. Number three is you now have a, a live application to understand the potential of distributed technology and a blockchain-based system which says, hey, now that I have this, I might never really use this application, but hey, can I think about what what can be done within the organization? Uh, so yeah, and, and, and the thing, and, and again, it's about how do you get started? Once you get started, then the ball keeps rolling, right? And of course, how can you do this at a fraction of the cost and, fraction, and a fraction of the time, right? Our entire application is built in the cloud, number one. Number two, we are pretty much blockchain agnostic. We don't, we're not, it, it doesn't matter if you want to use Ethereum, Hyperledger, multi-chain, Bitcoin, Ripple, whatever, or all of them. We can pretty much provision any network for you. Uh, last but not the least, again, and I have a few slides which I want to run through. Uh, we consciously believe that an enterprise building blockchain applications, it cannot, you cannot have a set of developers sitting in the basements, you know, uh, coding and building these applications. Blockchains need to become a part of the enterprise fabric, which means if you're going to read and write to blockchains, you also need to be able to read and write to core systems that exist, for example, in the banks and things like that. And that's where we also offer enterprise APIs so that any enterprise which has, you know, let's say banking systems or insurance systems that have APIs, you can also integrate back into your core systems. Now, what this offers is truly enterprise applications that you build, that use both the blockchain but also the existing systems. And I think, you know, in a lot of conversation, uh, many CIOs, but also, you know, IT delivery heads and things like that have asked us, are you saying I should throw out my existing system? No way. I don't think you can do that right away. Again, if you're just building pilots and prototyping right now and looking to build blockchain applications, no. You, yes, you want to use distributed ledgers, but pretty much also want to use core functionality that you built over the years, things like your customer database, things like your, you know, your accounts, your cars, different again. Last but not the least is the section on top. Uh, again, let's assume you're a large financial institution. Uh, the, the loan department wants to run one or two projects. The credit card team wants to run a couple of projects. The commercial banking guys want a project. The customer service one is looking at doing, at looking at how can I, you know, run a pilot and use blockchain technology out there. And so that's where you have different projects running. It. And you can see that in the workspace in the top that uses the different blockchain networks below. And now the enterprise has a structured way of doing blockchain in a lab-like form. So it's structured, it's made effective, and then it's now part of the whole enterprise as uh, from an enterprise fabric perspective, basically. Blockchain gets embedded into the enterprise fabric. Uh, quickly, this is what we build, this is what we offer, but it's not just enterprise, but any, you know, any, any institution, it could be organization, government agencies, and multiple parties that we are also talking to to offer, you know, the whole blockchain fabric, as we call it, uh, the whole stack. That's my pitch, which was a little longer, but can we go to the next slide? And I'm going to quickly run through this is, and then take some questions. Again, uh, how do you get started? And this is what we call our, uh, again, this is a four-part framework that was put together by, and actually proposed by William Mugair, uh, who's the author of The Business Blockchain. Uh, this is one of the best-selling books on Amazon, and I was one of the, first, uh, one of the key guys that uh, kind of uh, was, you know, kind of contributed towards it, crowdfunded. So, probably say that I actually have my name in the book. But, 
uh, multiple ways to look at blockchain, right? Number one is the utility. How do you, uh, you know, use blockchains to store and value around? Again, uh, the guys who presented earlier spoke about trust, and I think that's the whole thing about identity and trust. Again, and that's how blockchains lend themselves to uh, digital transformation within enterprises. A marketplace, a whole new economy, and you already saw, uh, and, and you probably read more about this, again, the whole ICO space and things like that. And last but not the least, looking at it as a development environment, where, and that's uh, a big area where we focus on how can enterprises look at blockchain as a technology and how can it become, how they can leverage blockchain as part of their enterprise uh, IP fabric. Uh, next slide. And this is again another quick one, which is, and, and I'll share these slides so that you have them handy. Uh, a five step method methodology to harness the potential of blockchain technology within any enterprise, right? You want to start right at the top where you try to start by understanding the technology, study and evaluate its impact on the industry, get a broader perspective. You can't just start with, you don't just want to start looking at an application. You want to look at, you want to look at the bigger picture first and then narrow it down to say, hey, here is how the technology has the potential to impact my business. Uh, again, it could be from disintermediation, it could be from uh, the whole security and trust perspective. Number two, put together a small group, a working group that, that looks at it and it, you know, evaluates and validates fitment within the company strategy. Number three, you then want to score and prioritize some initiatives that you come out with. You then want to look and uh, the, the prioritized one, you want to start some small pilots, start the prototype, start to play around with the technology. And then the moment you see, a, you see a couple of winners, you can pick them and look at taking some of this technology mainstream. Uh, next slide. Here are four considerations, and again, this is something we like to talk about. I mentioned this earlier also. We consciously believe that you know a blockchain application, at least within the enterprise space, cannot be this one project running out of the basement. It has to be part of the overall framework. It has to be a part of the enterprise strategy and blend into the enterprise. So again, uh, if, if you look at it today, a lot of these are pretty much disconnected systems, that, you know, kind of uh, detached from the core application and within any organization. So how can you build it all together? And then the last part is the whole ecosystem that you see. And I think uh, this is a space where of course, you've probably heard this enough of media around how a set of banks are getting together, how a set of um, uh, multiple organizations, even manufacturers coming together to kind of form consortiums that, you know, that work together to drive the technology and bring it to market. And I think that's a great space. But not only in the organization, but also within an organization. I don't know if any of, uh, pretty much if, if uh, all of you would have, uh, you know, engaged with the bank, but even in a modern economy like Singapore, uh, very unlikely that the loan department, the, the commercial banking team, the consumer banking team forget to talk to each other, don't even know each other there, right? So the same story, you, you, fill, you fill 10 forms together, you know, a, a personal account, a savings account, you fill the same 10 forms for a credit card, you fill another eight for uh, if you're looking for a loan and, and things like that. So there's a lot of opportunity, even interdepartmental within an enterprise. Of course, then if you're looking at the government space, then there's an opportunity for interagency collaboration. And the whole distributed nature of this technology and the cryptographic, asymmetric cryptography, presents itself for uh, as an opportunity for these enterprises internally as well as you know externally to collaborate and yet be sure that you know all information and all confidentiality is maintained. Next slide. That's the last one and this is, hey, you gotta take a first step somewhere. So what are, if, if you need to get started, yes you've looked at the technology and now you need to decide, hey, where am I gonna get started, right? So what are key areas or what are key situations where this technology can be really used? Number one, like transparency, like how can I bring about transparency? Uh, I know a number of, uh, you know, we're talking to a couple of uh, government agencies that are looking at, hey, how can I make things more transparent for people, right? Collaboration, like I said, within an institution as well as among institutions, there's enough of opportunity because of the nature, because of the very nature of uh, blockchain technology. Trust, and you probably heard this in the previous situation, uh, previous presentation, the whole uh, trade finance space and, and, and multiple areas where the technology is able to bring about trust in trustless environment. The 
court becomes the, the kind of a law uh, and, and basically facilitates, uh, brings about this trust among parties that don't trust each other and probably don't even know each other. This intermediation, this is about taking out the middleman, right? And I spoke about, you know, my conversations with uh, some of the largest uh, intermediaries like stock exchange, like central banks, um, and, 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 and even clearing houses and things like that because, hey, it's not just about them being disrupted, but how can they also participate in this to basically change the way they function? And I think there's a huge opportunity for them then to say, hey, we've been doing this the same way for the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Now here's an opportunity that presents itself for us to basically look at the next generation of solutions or someone's going to come and take us out anyways. So depends on which side of the table you, uh, you're sitting on, you look at it differently. And last but not the very least, security. I think there's a huge opportunity. And again, when you look at security, yes, how can I secure information, data, and things like that. But I also believe uh, blockchain, by its, blockchain technology, by its very nature, presents itself uh, for things like cyber security and things like that. Also, how can you secure information, information between multiple parties? And, uh, and, and, and so, if you look at the regular use cases, where you know, digital rights management and stuff like that, but also the whole cyber security space. And uh, again, if you've looked at, uh, <laughs> this is something I'm passionate about, but uh, if you look at cyber security and the way enterprises secure their systems, they've been doing it the same way for multiple years. So things like firewalls, VPNs, of course those are necessary, but it's on the same base and year after year, they'll layer, they layer it uh, again and again and you'll find patches and things like that. Of course, the latest uh, wanna try, wanna try, try the, one going around. What do the uh, service providers do? They issue another batch, and then they'll put another batch on top of that tomorrow and be after every time. But how about looking at, think, at, at emerging technology, at things like blockchains, which by their very nature can uh, pretty much revolution, revolutionize uh, cyber security and uh, offer you know very different ways of actually addressing these cyber attacks, right? Uh, one last piece, like I mentioned again, the whole intra-institution um, uh, thing there where any large organization, and it's not, I, 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 have a, I, I have a background in management consulting and trust me, even management consultants don't talk to each other as much, but then when you talk, looking at think, uh, institutions like banks, insurance, large manufacturers with um, operations spread across the globe, there's enough and more opportunity intra in, within the institution, but also then inter-institution where banks collaborate directly without having to go through uh, multiple layers of uh, central organization, right? That's pretty much my last slide, and um, I'm happy to take any questions there. Is your solution open for the commission object so here's the thing, and, and <laughs> how come I forgot to say this? So very often, uh, it's, it's not a question about is it, uh, I believe when we're looking at enterprise applications and given the sensitivity and the regulation and things like that, most of the use cases right now are using private permission blockchains. So we set up private networks. So we can actually set up a private Ethereum network or probably use multi-chain, which is Bitcoin, uh, which is Bitcoin Core and stuff like that, right? So a lot, of, but no, if an, if an institution is looking to build an application using something like Stellar or use even the public Ethereum network or the public Bitcoin network, we can use that, we can set up a node. Ha! Karsa, um, could you go back a couple of slides? Uh, so Hyperledger is one blockchain network, right? One more. So if you look here, we have Hyperledger here. So if you're building an enterprise application, you can use the Hyperledger. Uh, you can use a Hyperledger network, right? If you want, you can use that protocol, that blockchain, a private blockchain uh, network. That, that one, that's Hyperledger. Similarly, you have multi-chain Ethereum. Whatever application you're building, depending what network you want, we can set that up for you. So. Any other questions? What blockchain are you using? What blockchain technologies? So the technologies, so what we offer is a platform, right? So 
So you can use different blockchain technologies, different blockchain networks. Anyone, we are number one blockchain technology agnostic. So like I said, you can use Ethereum, multi-chain, and like that. We're also pretty much uh, infra agnostic, which means it, we currently run on Azure, but you can also run it on Amazon or uh, any other cloud services, right? Yeah, so this is a, in fact, this becomes a second question. Lovely, now I have a platform, right? But how do I get started? So um, very often the, uh, so you know, uh, uh, an IT head or the digital head will say, fantastic, I want to use this, and I have five developers, but I need a couple of consultants to come in, right? So we try and address that ourselves with our limited team, but then we have a network of partners and experts that we also bring in to kind of address these questions, right? Not just from a consulting perspective, kind of design the solution, but also then to, to kind of a couple of developers to help build it out along with their in-house team. What's the market time between the first Ah, <laughs> that's a nice one. So we are, uh, we have the prototype ready. So if anybody wants to see this application, it looks exactly like this. So if anybody wants to see it, please. I, uh, so we, uh, you know, I was talking to a couple of investment bankers and I was also talking to a number of folks. And pretty much everybody, whenever I demoed it, and it's become a matter of pride for me, because whenever I demoed it, pretty much everybody says, fantastic, this is the first blockchain platform I've ever seen. Yeah. So people just haven't seen that. So if any of you want to see it and, and, and know what it looks like, feel like great. Coming back to your question, uh, so we'll be launching it officially in, uh, in the first of June. We are doing three pilots. Oh, we, we want to get three free pilots to customers. One in Singapore, one in Hong Kong, and probably we'll do one in Korea. And then from there on, get some feedback and then build out the. So what we uh, uh, will be offering is what we call a limited release to a select set of people, run a select set of pilots. So if any of you all are from an enterprise that's looking to adopt the technology and want a pretty much free pilot, <laughs> reach out to me uh, after this and happy to have a conversation. Uh, and once we've done that, you know, uh, let's say, I, I believe August, if I'm not mistaken, is when we'll have a, a commercial version available. Any other question, guys? Sorry? So if some individual wants to... Yeah. This is an interesting question. So, usually, what we offer is, is an enterprise uh, thing, right? So, any enterprise can have its own blockchain innovation lab where you get the full stack, right? This is your space. Uh, now, given that we are a startup, we don't have the capabilities to be able, or, or, or the resources at hand to be able to offer it to many people. But we are talking to a partner, and we're talking to a telco who can then host this and then make it available for individuals to, to go and play around, right? So uh, hopefully we can get that fixed shortly because we've received tremendous requests for this. Just people who are looking to get into the space, right? And I've also had bankers who said, you know, I'm tired of doing what I know the potential and, and I'd love to have something like this to get started, right? Something that makes it very simple and yet very structured uh, to go about building. Uh, Yes, and, and, and you know what, if you're building a single application, you probably don't need such a complex system, right? An enterprise that, you know, with multiple divisions, multiple units looking to, 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 to each one of them wanting to run their own single or couple of pilots, and then you have a, you know, seven, eight, nine projects that are running, and that, that that's when it makes sense to have a more, uh, to have something like this, right? So because it gives it, it makes it a lot more structured, a lot more effective for any CIO any uh, you know, digital head of any organization, right? What about their head? It's a business company. It's a business company which is already a good client. So I want to tap on on this to serve my client. Sure. I'm directly not giving my client. But I want to tap on on this to serve my client. Then we 
we should be a partner, rather than, like, of course, that's possible. Where, and, and so we've got uh, multiple requests, and of course we're looking at multiple system integrators even to work with them to say, hey, you've got the resources and uh, deliver these solutions. And so that you have the platform, you might be of your clients, or multiple clients, you have a set of licenses, and then you use the platform to deliver the solution, right? The only thing you need to make sure is, um, again, so the way we've done it right now is each client gets his own version of this. So it's a cookie cutter model, right? And the only reason we do that is because of the regulation and the compliance, uh, um, you know, piece, right? Where it has to be siloed. So if you can't have multiple, but if your clients are okay having multiple uh, projects, I mean, projects of multiple clients running on the same system, then sure. Usually the manufacturers and all are a little bit, uh, you know, relaxed on that. But a bank will be very particular that hey, if you're going to use this then you can't have a, you know, a competitor on the project running right besides mine, right? And, and I think they need that more from a regulatory perspective right now. There are certain points, so I don't know, but happy to discuss that. Any other question, guys? Otherwise, I'm gonna let you go home. <laughs> this is the last uh, piece for the day. Go for it, come. <laughs> uh, if, like I said, if you're an enterprise and you want to uh, happy to uh, have one of my guys get in touch with you. If you're sitting right in front of you, uh, you can get in touch with one another and pick it up. Anyone else want early access? Okay, guys. <laughs> Alright. Okay, guys, then I'll leave it at that. Thank you so 